hello and welcome. In our introduction to this unit, we glimpsed back into your math journey so far and tried to share a bit of the broader view of math's role in helping us express what we see around us. We also reminded ourselves about how an equal sign helps us relate math expressions. Equalities are equal, and what's on the left of the equal sign has the same value as what's on the right. However, we acknowledge the need for symbols to describe our math observations when we find things that are not equal. We call these inequalities. The prefix in means not. Like when you're no longer a dependent, you are independent. Or when you don't take the shortest route, you follow an indirect pathway. Inequalities are not equal. You've used these symbols in the past to make simple factual statements like 5 is greater than 2, and with simple inequalities like x is greater than 3. The symbols used to describe the range of possible not equal relationships are greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. And of course, we could have not equal to, which means there's no solution at all. It's pretty easy to remember the symbols. Wider sides suggest greater than, and adding a line kind of makes an angled equal sign, although it's often shown like this. Let's review using a number line as a solution graph for our inequalities, and how we can write our solutions in the form of interval notation. Here's a simple inequality statement. We read this as x is greater than 2. We could, of course, say 2 is less than x, but for consistency and clarity, the variable is described first, regardless of how the inequality is written. Let's use real numbers at this point so we can show this easily on our solution graph. Notice that our arrow starts at the constant, or n value, with an open circle to state that it's not being included, and then extends to infinity in a positive direction. When we want to include the n value, we use the symbol greater than or equal to, and show this on our number line with a closed circle, which implies that sometimes the equivalent value can be part of the solution. We can do the same for values less than 2, or less than or equal to 2. Another way we can write our solution is using interval notation. An interval is, of course, a range of something, usually time, but we can apply it here. A round bracket, or parentheses, tells us not to include the end term, the open 2 shown here, while a square edge bracket does include the end or constant term, the closed 2 shown here. When our values extend to infinity, we use the parentheses since we can't include the final value. There isn't one. Here are the interval notations for the remaining two examples. Now that we've reviewed how to describe the inequality solutions, we can move to solving inequalities themselves. With all your experience solving equalities, this should be relatively straightforward. When you see an inequality statement, you can think left and right side of the inequality symbol, and look to isolate the single variable as you would with an equation. In this example, subtract 5 from both sides, and then divide each side by 2, to get our solution as x is greater than negative 1. Just like you could do for checking your answer for an equation, you can substitute any value from our solution back in the original statement to make sure it's true. For simplicity, we could use 0. 2 times 0 is 0, leaving us with 5 is greater than 3, which of course is true. What if we substituted a value out of the range of our solution? Try negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 5 is 1, which is not greater than 3, suggesting that our solution looks to be correct. Of course, you'd have to check many more to be sure, but at this point you should trust your ability to solve inequalities, and a couple of points should confirm your answer. Here's our solution shown on a number line, and in interval notation. Here's an inequality with a couple more steps. This is probably a good time to pause the video to see if you can solve this inequality, graph it, and try your hand at writing it in interval notation. 
As you do with equations, the first step is to expand our expressions to get rid of the brackets, and then combine any like terms. In our example, just the two constant terms, giving us positive 6. To eliminate the x to the right, we subtract 2x from both sides. Now we subtract 4 from each side, and finally divide each side by 2. Our solution is x is less than or equal to 1. Again, confirm the solution. When we are checking a greater or less than or equal to inequality, you need to do at least two tests. For the first test, make it an equality statement and test the 1 to make sure that its value is actually equal. When you plug 1 in for x in the original inequality, we see we get 8 is equal to 8, as we had hoped. Then pick any value less than 1, 0 is an easy choice, and plug it in. And we have 4 is less than 6, which proves that at least these two solutions are in fact true. To show the solution graphically, we can once again use the number line and show the solution in interval notation. Inequalities give us a way to describe our observation that not all things are equal. Inequality symbols allow us to write statements that suggest a range of possibilities. Start paying attention to examples you have likely seen already, like limited capacity on elevators, height or parking restrictions, baggage allowances for airlines, etc. Our inequality solutions can be shown on a number line. Open circles mean to exclude the n value, and closed circles mean to include. We can also describe a solution in interval notation, where our n values are grouped with brackets, round parentheses to exclude, or square brackets to include the n values. So our parking sign could be shown like this, or as a number line, or as an interval. We will look at a special rule you'll need when solving inequalities in our next segment.